By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a game between an Arabian Nights Mono Blue deck against an Urnum Geddon deck. And I'm actually showing you this game, not because it's like super exciting, but because the Arabian Nights deck is just so cool. It's being played by Rene, the player on the left. And I mean, you're going to see it now in action. I've been told that he's been playing with this deck for forever, just 25 years of magic. And he, he, has, he has it in penny sleeves, as you can see. Um, anyway, let's get, uh, let's have a look at the game. Uh, what we see is Nick here, who's got a Lanawar Elves and a Savannah Lion on the board. And we see Dene now playing out a Simbad. And his Simbad is a 1-1 one, one Arabian Nights blue creature. You can tap it to draw a land. Uh, tap it to draw a card. And if it's a land, you get to keep it. If it's not a land, you get to discard it. Okay, thank you, Nick. I just explained the whole card and now you remove it from the game. Anyhow, uh, Nick is attacking very aggressively. Ernim Gannon, an aggressive deck. playing uh, Attacking with the Lions, the Lanawar, and the Factory. Um, putting in five points of damage there. And there's a giant tortoise, so that's a 1-4 as long as it's untapped. And when you attack, it's a 1-1. One, one. And there's a Sarah Angel, and this is just brutal. Um, this is going to be very difficult for Dene uh, to come back in the game. There's an Island of Vakvak. Vak. How cool is that? Island of Vakvak Vak prevents all damage from flying creatures. It's just, uh, it's a fantastic card. It's a great card. I mean, you don't see it often in any games and um it's out of the fuck i mean it's it's what else can i say I've, I've never seen it actually being played in a game uh a tournament game i should say so this is really cool but there is a regrowth on the strip mine and the strip mine is stripping the island of Vakwak. that's a shame that's a shame and that means that the sarah angel can start attacking now uh but Rene has played a surrender a freed and the angel's gonna attack he decides not to Put his surrender profit in front, so that means ooh the four damage I wanted to say, but there's an Armageddon which makes sense in an Urnum Gannon deck. Oh my goodness, and that means that all the land are gone. So there you are. You have g two giant tortoise that look really awesome, but you also have that Sarah Angel that is just flying over your turtles, and it's not looking good here for Dene, who's on six now. There's a Pixies there. What can he do? Passing turn, um, just attacking with everything, right? And that that's it. First game goes to Urnum Geddon. But, I mean, what a deck here uh, by Dene in those penny sleeves. Fully Arabian Night. Fantastic. So hopefully uh, Dene can win this one, that we can see a third game. It's the Library of Alexandria for Nick. Oh, man, and that's instant trouble. And there's a Dundun. Great card. It's a 4-1 creature with island home, so it's 4 power for just 2 mana. But your opponent needs to have islands in order to attack, and as soon as you don't have any islands left, you lose your Dundon. And that's actually relevant in a game where you're playing against somebody who has, I think, 3 Armageddon's main board. And what we see here is in Savannah Lions, and I can't really see what card that is. The second one he put on because of the glare, unfortunately. There's a Surrender Pafrit there on the board, a 3-4 flyer. So it's actually looking much better for Rene compared to that first game where he was instantly under pressure. At least he has some breathing space. But Nick still has that active library of Alexandria. I mean, that's just a pain. And I wonder, I mean, Rene probably doesn't play with Strip Mine because Strip Mine is not in the Arabian Nights expansion. He does play with Desert because it's in there. Working great against the Savannah Lines, by the way. Uh, and there's a Tsunami. Oh, wow, that is brutal. And and you see what, what's happening there. So all the islands are gone. That means that Dandan is gone with the island home. And this is brutal. And I wonder if uh, Nick actually boarded out his Armageddons and replaced them by the Tsunamis. Uh, but wow, Tsunami, beautiful card, by the way. I think it. I feel it should see more play. Uh, there's an island there on the board for Dene. Can't really do anything anymore. And, uh, and there's also a spirit link on that Surrender Perfeet, meaning that Rene loses a life and Nick gains a life. You can see that happening right now. And there's also an Urnum on the board there for Nick. So it's it's not looking good for Dene again. He needs something. And there's an unstable plate on the Surrender Perfeet, probably with the idea to block the Urnum. And, uh, and also slowly kill his own 
uh, a fruit. So at least for now, uh, Dene is pretty safe. He's on 16. And he's getting his counters there. It's the first counter. So that means it goes from 6-7 to a 5-6. So it's kind of a Mamoti Jin right now. Old Man from the Sea. That's such a cool card. It's a 2-3 three for 3. And you can tap it to take over a creature with the power equal to Old Man of the Sea or, or below. But not bigger than Old Man of the Sea. So it only has 2 power. But if you would play an Unstable on there, it could take over the Urnum. Unfortunately, Nick is casting an instant swords on that one. Probably a good move, but in terms of enjoying this game, it's not really nice. But I get it. And there's a Chaos Orb, and things are just looking worse and worse for Rene. And he's going to 17. Still on quite a lot of life, but I mean... I don't see a way out of here for Rene at the moment. He needs like a blue board wipe, like a Wrath of God um, or, a nev or a disc. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that a disc. I'm just going to call it a disc. And he's going to flip his Chaos Orb on the desert. And that's pretty funny using a Chaos Orb to flip on a desert. And as you can see, I've put the flips in slow-mo. I got some comments from viewers who said, man, it's going so fast, the Chaos Orb flips. I have no idea what's happening. Um, and so I said, okay, we'll, um, we'll put it in slow-mo. So let me know what you think of that, if you like it or if you don't. And what we see is that um, Nick, after that flip, is attacking with everything. The Surround and Free to Chum blocks the Urnum. And that's that. So that is gone. And Rene is on 13 life, only having a giant tortoise as a blocker. So that's not ideal. I mean, I still hope that he wins, but I don't see how. But I want to see more of this deck. And he's on 5 life now, so this is probably his last turn. What can he still do? He's playing an Unstable Mutation and a disenchant ah oh, man just give him at least a giant tortoise like a truly giant tortoise muscular powerful giant tortoise and there is the final swing and win for Ernum Gannon that's a 0-2 victory there for the Ernum Gannon player I wish we could have seen more of this uh, beautiful deck thank you Renee for bringing it to the tournament um, thank you all for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel that talks old, about old school magic. And if you'd like to see more games, you can click on the playlist that's appearing right now. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time. Icatus,